hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is abiola and in today's video we'll be recreating this bubble dress here is my own recreation at the right hand side this bubble dress has drawstrings at the sides and yeah um on this day i couldn't get good pictures i couldn't get you know quality videos so i just resorted to using this to show you guys the end product or end result i'll be making use of this ankara print and this black crepe fabric that's what i'll be making use of and Here's the calculation you need in order to know the fabric required. My shoulder width is 15 inches, which I'll divide by two and I have 7.5 inches. Okay, then the sleeve of this booboo -boo dress is going to be eight inches in length. Okay, so I'm going to add that eight inches plus the 7.5 and I'll have 15.5 inches. And the allowance I'll be working with is one inch. So 15.5 plus one inch gives me 16.5 inches. That's just for one side of the booboo -boo dress. Okay, so for the front dress now, we'll be needing 16.5 times two, which will give 33 inches of fabric for the front. For the back dress, 16.5 times two, which will give 33 inches. We're not adding a zipper so the total we need is 16 inches for the length of the dress i want it to be 36 inches plus one inch seam allowance which will be 37 so what we're working with is 66 and 37 inches so here is the fabric and i've already cut it out here is it i'm going to do the measurement so you see the length we have 37 inches can you see 37 inches for the width of the dress like we calculated i'm supposed to have 66 inches but what i have here is 67 which doesn't really matter so um i just added that in case in case so here's how you fold you fold the two ends of the width then you fold again like this so now you folded it into four okay and one side is open so you're cutting the front and the back together i flipped it over so now let's mark i marked my burst point which is 10 inches and i marked my waist which is 16.5 and i marked my hip line which is 26.5 and the length of the dress which is 36 i didn't really know this wasn't showing but it's 36 that i marked here i marked 10 again i marked 16.5 and i marked 26.5 and the 36 inch length and i went ahead to connect all the lines after that i decided to label all the lines this is my center front okay that is my bust point at the top that is my waistline and my hip line and the dress length okay so um i'm going to mark the neck width i'm working with which is 3.5 then the neck depth for the back is one inch i'll go ahead and connect the points okay so like i said 3.5 by one inch for the neck depth for the front i will be working with 7.5 okay so i marked 7.5 and i connected that okay then like i said my shoulder is 15 inches shoulder width is 15 inches divided by 2 is 7.5 so i'm going to mark that 7.5 now yeah and if we remember the sleeve length i'm working with is 8 inches plus one inch hemming allowance so i'll go ahead and mark nine inches at that point from that point i'll come down by one inch for my shoulder slope and i'll connect to the neck area just the way you see me doing now let's calculate our armhole line my armhole is my bust divided by six plus 1.5 and what i have is approximately eight inches and i marked eight inches from that point then i'm going to add one extra inch for ease and one extra inch for allowance so right now i'm going to add one extra inch for ease and one extra inch for allowance that makes it 10 inches i'll go ahead and really straight line at the new armhole line i will be going in by one inch and i will connect from that one inch to the shoulder area just like this then my hip is 41 41 divided by 4 is 10.25 that's what i marked then i'll add three inches extra allowance then one inch seam allowance that three inches is just to make it you know big it's not a fitted dress then i'll measure what i have there which is 14.25 i'll mark the same thing on my waistline i'll connect that i'll also mark the same thing on my dress length line and connect as well after that i'll go to my new armhole line and 
mark my boss divided by 4, which is 9.5. After marking the 9.5, I'll mark 3 inch extra allowance and mark 1 inch for seam allowance. And from that part, that 1 inch area, I'll come out by 1 inch from the middle there, just the way you see me doing. We're trying to create our armhole curve, then I'll connect it the way you see me doing. This is not meant to be straight, it's meant to be curvy, so as to allow hand movement and just for ease, okay? I'll go ahead and cut out every part of this dress including the back neckline i'm not going to cut out the front neckline right now until i've removed the back remember we are cutting both the front and the back together so when i'm done i'll go ahead and bring out the back from inside it so that i do not mistakenly cut out the front neckline and the back neckline together and now i'll go ahead to trim out the front neckline okay and that's just it now it's time to create the front design i'm going to be drafting it on a paper before i cut on fabric first we'll maintain the 3.5 inch neck width and the neck depth which is 7.5 inch we're going to maintain all of that so we'll connect that and on the side i want this design to be four inches in width so i'll mark four inches okay then i'm going to mark the length of this design the length i'm working with is 14 inches i'll mark that and i'll also connect the lines i'll go in from that point by two inches after which i'll connect the lines from the shoulder area to that two inch point i'm going to open up my paper now and i'm going to draft the same thing at the other side using that crease as my guide 3.5 inch and i'm going to connect to the 7.5 inch neck depth i also mark four inch at that point but at this mid area i'll try to get a straight line that's why i marked seven again after getting the straight line i also mark four inch and connect the lines now i would also extend this by 2.5 inches that's how wide i want that part to be then i'll try to get a straight line and connect everything to form like some sort of square don't know if that makes sense so i connected everything then i'll go ahead and add half an inch seam allowance around the whole design okay this is just to you know achieve what we have on the on the thumbnail okay so when i'm done i'll go ahead and cut out everything this half inch that we added is what we're going to use to fold the fabric before stitching on our sewing machine just for it to be neat okay now i'll go ahead and cut out the fabric first of all, i cut out the fabric piece that i needed so that it's just easy for me to cut out then i went ahead to pin this down then i cut out exactly what i needed after cutting that out, I'll place this on the front piece, just like this, wrong sides facing each other. Then I'll pin it down as well. And I'm going to mark out my 0.5 inch seam allowance on the neckline because we're about to turn the neckline. We're placing it wrong sides facing each other. Then this is me after I had stitched that part. Then I cut off the excess allowance and I went ahead to notch because, you know, with v-neck, for it to lay down flat, you need to notch, you need to cut out the excess allowance. If it were to be a round neck, you might not need to do all of this. Now I'm going to flip it over after notching. Now I've flipped it over. I'm going to go ahead to top stitch now towards the Ankara area. I'll go and top stitch on my sewing machine and I will be back. And here is what I have when I was done top stitching. I have gone to stop stitch everything. I'm going to iron and fold in all the edges before I go to my sewing machine to stitch. With this part, you would require a hemming gum, but it's optional. Some people can do this without a hemming gum, but I like to use it so that I, you know, iron everything in place before I go to my sewing machine to stitch it down and fold the end. So I will use my hemming gum now to hold all the areas so that it doesn't move and it lays flat okay i think it's also important to do this because you don't want your design after you have stitched it down to be looking like it's not properly placed you know we have to join it together for it to become a one piece now i'm going ahead to fold all the edges and i'm using my hemming gum to hold the edge in place so that when i go to my sewing machine it's easy for me to stitch down i hope that makes a lot of sense so i will fold all the edge like this this requires patience so, so you just have to calmly fold and make sure you achieve what you want so that when you just go to your sewing machine you will just go ahead to stitch so once i'm done folding 
I'll head over to my sewing machine to stitch down. But before then, let's work on the back piece design. So I'm going to place it this way and cut off the back neckline. I'm going to remove the front piece and measure 2.5 inch in length at that point. And I'll use the front to determine what I would want the width of that place to be like so after measuring that i would now add 0 0.5 inch seam allowance to that point for folding okay a very good alternative is to just mark the four inch like we did in front and add 0 0.5 inch seam allowance that was what i realized later but the length should remain 2.5 inches and the same thing i did in front i'm going to place them you know wrong sides facing each other and stitch then top stitch after which i'll iron just like you see me doing and i'm trying to check to ensure that everything matches so that when i join the shoulder together it's going to match after that i'm going to go ahead to iron this properly after ironing i'm going to fold the sides as well that is the reason for the 0 0.5 inch seam allowance by the side i'll fold the sides and i'll fold the under as well i've gone ahead to stitch them down after ironing and here is what i have this requires patience so just you know calmly do it then i'll go ahead now to join the front and the back piece right sides facing each other i would join the shoulders using 0 0.5 inch seam allowance then the sides i'm going to join them using one inch seam allowance that i added after which i will hem the base of the dress so here is what i have when i went to do all of that and yeah everything is looking in place now it's time to draft out our drawstrings area guys at this point you need to listen well i did not like how mine came out because i feel like the drawstring area was just too wide for this point i marked seven inches guys just mark three inches or two inches three or two here i also marked the same seven inches like i said use three or two inches for the width of this drawstring i marked six inches do not mark six inches use three or two inches because mine i felt like it was too big and there was really no need for that i just really wanted to you know have a wide drawstring then i used my free hand to connect the lines okay then i cut that out after which i will use my bias tape to turn everything you can either turn it outwards or inwards but i turned it outwards so that it looks like some sort of design at that point so after using my bias tape i went ahead to also form a rope which is 20 inch long and this rope that i formed I just folded the bias tape into two and I stitched on it. That's how I formed my rope. Just like I'm showing you, I just folded it like this and I stitched on it. That's how I formed the rope. And the two ropes are 20 inches long. Then I'll go ahead to push that in the hole. And you can make your rope as long as you want, to be honest, because this is a drawstring. Like I said earlier, guys, do not use 7x6 like I did. You can use 3x3, three 2x2, by 3x2. Three, two by two, three by two. Okay, don't use that because I realized that the drawstring area was too wide. So um, the dress came out nice, but it could have been better. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.